Hey everyone, Superdictus here, and today we're going to take a look at Tell Vocoder 2. Now, this is a video I actually shot before and somehow managed to lose, and I figured with the uh, loop up competition behind us, it would be a good time to revisit this vocoder, because I do feel it's a little bit of an underrated uh, tool, and it's a very, very nice freebie. Um, now, to save you all from uh, my singing talents or lack thereof, uh, I will be demoing this with a um, sample provided by Ghost Hack. This was one of their uh, free samples during the Christmas season. Um, so let's quickly listen to our raw signal. Who are you to say that you still want me when it was you who said goodbye? Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? All right, lovely. Much better than me singing. Uh, also to share some expectations, uh, I'm not going to try to explain how a vocoder work. There's quite a few uh, videos on the topic uh, on YouTube already. So if you're interested in finding all, out all the technical details, definitely, uh, yeah, just search a little bit and you will find some good examples going through all the motions of what a vocoder is and how it works. Um, all you need to know for this tutorial is that a vocoder uses two signals. You have both a carrier and a modulator signal. Uh, the modulator signal in most classical use cases is a vocal and the carrier in most classical use cases is a synthesizer. So let's turn on tell vocoder and let's talk about what is going on here. So what we have on this track right now is our vocal, which is going to be our modulator. And uh, this track is set to MIDI in. And I actually have my MPK mini here on my desk. And what I can do now is I can play notes. And if I play a note, you will see in Reaper, the little yellow bar indicates that a note is being played. Tell vocoder has a built-in little synthesizer. Now it's a little bit basic, um, but for the purpose it works fine. It gives you a pulse, a saw, a sub, and a noise oscillator, which you can mix. You get some uh, tuning controls on the pulse and the saw wave. Uh, you get portamento or glide or however you want to call it a global tuning knob and a global range knob. So you can tune everything up and down if you desire to do so. Oscillator sync is also an option to sync the pulse and saw waves. And you have a poly mode or a mono mode. Um, if you activate poly mode, you will lose your portamento of course. But I don't know, for most uses for a vocoder, I actually much prefer poly. But let's start off with the non-poly version. And let me just play this sample on a loop. Now the first thing you will notice is if I start the transport right now, you will hear nothing. And that's because right now we only have one signal and that's our uh, vocal. But we still need a carrier to actually hear something. So let me just actually input any note right now. Let's do a C. And a lovely thing of uh, folk artists is that you can change the pitch of whatever is sung. Actually, you can sing pretty out of key and with a vocoder you can correct for this out of keyness. Which is pretty, pretty fun and pretty awesome. With these controls you can control your uh, oscillator for the carrier. So if you just do a pulse wave. Uh, 
you get the very roboty. If you go for the saw wave, you get a bit more of the harmonics in there. So it's quite fun. Just a sub oscillator. And just with the noise. Oh, just drag that down. Let's do noise, and this will sound pretty nasty. It's absolute nightmare fuel for people who hate it when people whisper in their ear. And if you just blend around with this a little bit, uh, kind of the classical way to do it is uh, quite a bit of saw, a little bit of pulse, a little bit of noise. And just because we can, we add some sub. Oh, I messed up the tuning. <laughs> I was wondering why it was sounding so weird. There we go. You also get a release time for your synth that's over here for some reason because it controls the filters. Um, all right, so let's turn on poly mode so we actually get a nice effect. And that's already pretty cool sounding. Uh, and, and that's a neat thing. Vocoders actually don't really need that much to give cool results. Um, that's an added bonus. You can play around with the balance of the filters. If that's something you're into, you can mess around with it quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if any of the presets actually... Oh, there we go. So here they took out quite a bit of the low end and boosted the middle a little bit to make it a little bit uh, thinnier. Really fun. Um, it also gives you a control to uh, lower the de sing so kind of a de -er kind of deal, but for a vocoder. Uh, the release determines the release of the filters, so this also controls the sustain of your MIDI input. You can add harmonics and you can change the volume. Actually, let me just quickly try to default it. Oh, that's not default. This is a default. So without the harmonics, and I will turn up the harmonics as we go. Changes quite a bit of the sound. Uh, I actually prefer just using poly mode instead of the harmonics, but it's totally a viable way. And we also get a built-in chorus. Uh, no controls on a chorus. Again, you can also add your own chorus after this, but I think it's a nice touch to just have it in there. And in general, it's it's a good sounding chorus that works for the vocoding applications. Uh, so far, the feature set is pretty pretty basic for a vocoder, but again, I don't feel personally that a vocoder should be a very complicated uh, thing. I think the beauty is in the simplicity here. 
but there's one feature that really pushes this to what I think a beyond free level and that's these little buttons here now for this you need to do some routing uh, in Reaper I made it so that this track here is routed into the sidechain of our focal track and now if we activate this input mode and this sidechain button uh, by the way if you're lacking this sidechain double check if you're actually using tell vocoder 2 and not tell vocoder 1 because one doesn't have this button a you need to press both of these to activate the sidechain uh, input now what happens is that you can actually feed any random sound into uh, the vocoder as a carrier signal so if I just uh, play play it back right now again nothing will happen but if I take any sound and I've lined up a few samples here to start with I put it into this track so now this is our carrier if you're feeling crazy, you can also just throw in a drum loop. Or a more melodic thing. So that's pretty fun um, and that really opens it up because now you're no longer depending on um, on the synthesizer of this vocoder itself you can actually use any random input source you want so another thing i've set up is still this is just our input track but now we have midi going in as well and we can use uh, in this case any synthesizer i chose to pick anna too because i haven't featured it on this channel yet so i figured might as well <laughs> that happens someday so once again if i just play it back nothing happens uh, and now we actually have a little bit of visual feedback so you can actually see the notes i'm pressing that's really fun so you can just load in any synthesizer and use it as a carrier for your um, for your vocoding and that to me is really really a fun concept uh, because suddenly every synthesizer your own can be a vocoder and you don't actually even have to pay for it i mean that's pretty amazing right <laughs> I definitely like that LED. Uh, let's actually try to find something that's a little bit different. How about this? <laughs> And the effect can be uh, however wild you want. Uh, nice thing, of course, is at least in uh, Reaper, you have this nice little. They say that you still want me when it was you who said goodbye. 
Who are you to say that you still want me when it was you who said goodbye? So you can hear what is going on with your signal once you start to mess around with it. So that's really uh, tell vocoder in a nutshell. Uh, you can use the internal carrier, but I think it's even cooler that you can actually use external synths or drum samples or whatever you want as a uh, carrier signal. And again, this is totally free to download from the website. So if ever you wanted to mess around with a vocoder, this is probably going to be, yeah, the best starting point you can think of, <laughs> really. Uh, so that's my video uh, for today and on the topic of the Tel vocoder 2. If there's anything you want to know about this vocoder or if there's anything you want to see demonstrated, just let me know. And for now, I'm going to say have a great day.